1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verse, starting in verse 51. I want to preach a rap message for you on the rapture. The rapture of the church. Hallelujah. $1,128. Is everybody there? Amen. Come on now. I'm going to start calling some people out here. If you're sleeping, I'll have to do something to come over you and just uh, nudge you a little bit, wake you up. Hallelujah. Page, uh, page 1,128, 1 Corinthians 15, starting at verse 51, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and the mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass. The saying that was written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for this 445. We thank you for every man that has come in this place today. I just say, Lord God, right now, and I pray over every one of these men, Lord, that you would work mightily and bountifully in their life, Lord, that you would change them, Lord God, into what they were when they came in, to something different on the way out. But, Lord God, that they would be sold out for you, that they would know you as Lord Savior, Lord, that they commit their life to you, Lord, that they would be changed, Lord God, like we're reading today, they'd be changed transformed, Lord God, by the gospel, changed by the, the word of God, transformed by your holy Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for everyone that's here and for the Milwaukee Rescue Mission. And we just ask you, Lord God, you'd work mightily and bountifully in your holy name. And every man said, Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to also read for you a couple of verses out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It has to do with the same verses that we're reading today, also written by the Apostle Paul. He says in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. You know, the rapture of the church is the next, next item on the agenda for heaven. Everything that needs to take place for the rapture of the church has already tra transpired. It has already happened. All we need is for the Lord to come, as we read today, and come down to take his church home. The stage is set all for it to happen. Now, we call this verses, and the ones we just previously read, they call that a big fancy called, term called eschatology. But it is also called prophecy. But it's all future events that are yet to happen in the calendar of God, but are going to happen because just as everything else has happened to the very tooth, to the very second, so we know that the rapture of the church is right around the corner, and it's going to happen. I thank God that it's going to happen, aren't you? If you know Jesus Christ, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, trust me, you're looking for the rapture. Trust me, this world is not going to save you. This world doesn't want to have nothing to do with you if you know Jesus Christ. And in case you haven't looked at the television set lately, things are not getting better as man may suggest through evolution, but they're indeed getting worse. The Bible had prophesied they would be getting worse and things would be spinning more and more out of control in the last days. And every end time event that you read about in the book 
especially in 2 Timothy in chapter 3. And if you look into the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew, you see how everything is progressing, just how the Holy Spirit inspired the men of God to write. Amen? So the rapture of the church. Now, the rapture of the church is for the people who know Jesus Christ. So if you don't know Jesus Christ and you're, you're, here's a guy, a preacher up here talking about the rapture, you give me a couple of minutes, I'll get to you. Amen? I'm not going to leave you out. But the rapture, you say, brother, it's not in the Bible. You can look at the whole Bible, the word rapture is not in there. I'd say to you, yes and no. If you look at the verses in 1 Thessalonians in chapter 4, in verse 17, it says that then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. That word caught up in verse 17 is in the Greek means harpanzo. Harpanzo. In the Latin Vulgate, it means rapture, which is where we get our word rapture. So technically the word is not there to say rapture, but when you look at the word in the Greek and in the Latin Vulgate, the word rapture is there. Now what does that word mean? Well, that might be interesting to know here. It means to seize or to carry off by force. That's what it means. When the rapture of the church comes and Jesus comes into the clouds and meets us and takes us home, it's going to be sudden. It's going to be like right away, lickety split. It's going to be that quick and it's going to be a force that's going to take us. And the closest thing that I could give you to an analogy is the same word is used in Acts chapter 8 and verse 39. Philip is in the city and he's preaching the word of God and he's going to town he's winning souls for the kingdom of God and the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit of God an angel takes him to meet a, you, you, a Ethiopian eunuch in a chariot and it says in verse 8 and 39 and when they were come out of the water the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip and the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Philip came down, and the Lord told him to go there. And he went there, and he was giving the gospel to this Ethiopian eunuch who wanted to know the gospel. He had the book of Isaiah open. He wanted to know who Isaiah was, but he wanted to know what this gospel thing was about. And so Philip gave him the gospel. And just as he was hurled into the, into the very presence of this eunuch to be able to present the gospel from the city he was at, the Holy Spirit took him where he was at after he baptized the eunuch in the water and carried him back into the city. Philip wasn't looking to be going to the eunuch, wasn't looking to be water baptizing this man, but the Lord had gave him this wonderful opportunity to share the gospel with a man that was looking. And so the, the Lord carried him away. I don't know how many miles it was. I don't know how the, the, what the distance was or the time. But boom, just like that, he was transported. Kind of like on Star Trek. We just see those get people on those uh, transporter things. You know, one second they're on the spaceship. Next thing you know, they're on a planet. Kind of something, kind of, kind of like that only in the supernatural. So the Bible correctly says the Lord caught away Philip, which is the same word, by force. He just took Philip, and boom, he was in another place, and he was able to preach the gospel. But you say, where is this power that is needed to be able to present the gospel and to be able to bring this rapture on? Well, you may remember that this is all of God. There ain't a lick of this that has man has anything to do with other than receiving Christ. This is all God's goodness and what he's prepared for his bride, the church, to take them home. And so, but the power though, to be able to do that, the closest thing that I could find for you guys 
will be wrapped up in Matthew chapter 27 and verses 52 and 53. You may remember that Jesus had just died on the cross. The veil was ripped in two. A number of things happened, but what else happened? There were a number of saints who were dead in the ground that came to life. I mean, I'm talking just like right out of a horror movie. They came to life. The power of God rested upon them, gave them life, and they arose from the grave. The Bible says in Matthew in 27, in 52 and 53, and the graves were open, and many of the bodies of the saints which were slept came out of their graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many. It's that same power that gave these people, these saints, the ability to be risen from the dead and to be able to climb out of those graves and to be able to march into the cities. It is that same power that's going to be there for Lord to come down out of the clouds, beat us in the air, and take us home. It says in our verses today, it says this, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we should all be changed. The promise of the man of God who knows Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is this, that you're going to be changed. Right now you have a mortal body that goes through sickness, it goes through pain, it goes through all the things that it does because of the effects of sin. And all of those terrible things that happen when Adam and Eve sin, all you're seeing right now in the world are all effects of sin. When you see terrible things happen in this world, you don't need to look no farther than to see that it's a byproduct of sin. And so we look and it says we're going to be changed. Because the Lord is going to meet us in the air that know Him as Lord and Savior, and He's going to change us. That's His promise. So it says in a moment of a twinkling of an eye. Now a twinkling of an eye, some say, is the ability to be able to blink your eye, and it's one thousandth of a second. So the twinkling of an eye is going to be real quick, like I had told you before. When the Lord comes and He calls us, and we're taken up in that rapture, it's going to be quick. Now, I'm saying, I'm thinking that one thousandth of a second is quick. But the phrase is, a twinkling of an eye, is frequently used in Jewish writings to signify how speedily or suddenly anything can be done. So that term is common in Jewish writing. And it means just like that. If you ever saw any of those Left Behind series movies, you left, you saw any of those uh, Jer Jerry Jenkins uh, books and, and stuff like that, that, it's just that quick. It's going to be just that quick. Now, the rapture happens, like I said, it's ready to happen at any time, but there are three points of view that people have on the rapture, and I'm going to explain them to you. I adhere to one of them, most people adhere to one of them, but I'm just giving you that there's an argument for three, although I can only argue for the one that I know about and the one that I hold a position on because I just that's just what I believe. So the rapture itself, when the Lord comes down in the clouds and takes his church home, there is a period of time which is called the tribulation period, which is a period of seven years. That period of seven years is when the Antichrist comes to be able to rule and reign on the earth. The Spirit of, the spirit of God is gone. And Katie bar the door, all hell will break loose, literally. People will still get saved during this time, but it's going to be awfully hard. And it will probably cost them their life. So there are some that believe, most believe... And what we call a pre-tribulation rapture, which means that the Lord is going to come, come back, take the church home before the tribulation period starts. And the reason, one of the reasons why I believe that, I mean, there's a lot of scripture to believe that, but that's just what I believe. I believe that the Lord's going to come back before the tribulation, take us home. Because if we are the bride of Christ, now think about this, if the Lord loves us, we are the bride of Christ 
Why would he love us so much he'd have us sit go through hell? You know, if I really loved you, I wouldn't love you to say, you know what, honey, I really love you, but I want to see you go through hell. That's not the way the Lord operates. And so I hold a position that, along with some scripture, a lot of scripture verses, that I believe in what we call a pre-tribulation rapture, which means that this event's going to happen before the tribulation period starts. There are some that hold the position that they call a mid-trip rapture, which means that halfway through the tribulation period, there's three and a half years of peace and quiet. The Antichrist is ruling. He's taking care of all the problems on the earth, and he's got the answer to everything, and everybody thinks he's a wonderful person. They think that's when the rapture is going to happen then, because the last three and a half years is when terrible things happen, and he goes against the Jewish agreement that he had with them. Everything gets changed, and, and everything gets thrown out the window, and he's a mean, ornery little boy. And so there are some that think, though, we hold, I hold the position of the pre-tribulation rapture. There are some that hold it to the mid-trib. And there are some that think that after the seven years is when Christ is going to come back to take his church. And I find nothing to support that, but I'm just telling you, people believe that. And so there are these three uh, things that, that people believe. But going back to our verses here it says in 53 it's for this corruption this corruptible must put out incorruption and the mortal must put out immortality so when the corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal shall put out immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory we have these mortal bodies we were born with them and because we were born with mortal bodies, the best that we can live is 129 years. That's the best we could muster up because of sin. But the Bible is telling us that when we meet the Lord in the air, these bodies that we have, they're all full of gook and full of sin. They're going to be gone. And we're going to be given a body by the Lord that is incorruptible. One that could be in his presence one that is changed to be able to be able to withstand the glory of God and the power of God forever and ever. And then we'll, of course, get these white robes for the wedding supper of the Lamb and all that wonderful things that are happening. But the promise to the believer is this, that death is swallowed up in victory because we don't have this as our home. This place is just a place we're passing through, but in the rapture, the Lord takes us home, and he takes us to heaven, and there that we will be with him forever. Now, there's two school of thoughts, and I want to give you on this, because if I don't give them to you, I'll forget. There is a common school of thought that when you die, and you're a believer, your soul, by the time that you die, goes to heaven to be with the Lord and when the Lord comes back in the rapture, your body is reunited with your soul. That's common. But there is also philosophy out there that believes that your soul stays in the ground with your body until the Lord takes you home, and then the whole thing just goes at one time. I'm just telling you that's out there. I don't believe it. I believe that the time that you pass, your soul goes to be with the Lord. And there are verses to support that as well. And so here we are. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? One thing that I realized before I knew Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I worried about death. I worried about where I was going to spend it. I was worried about if I was good enough for God. But I worried about dying and guys I've done enough funerals to know that when people come into a funeral they're shaking and sometimes they're shaking because they see the person in the coffin that's dead the deceased and they start thinking about their own lives where am I spending eternity what happens going to happen to me when I die they start thinking about these things because they don't know where they're going 
and they're shaking and death has been unresolved in their heart. They've never given their life to the Lord, which is always the case. And they needed to make a decision for Christ because I'm telling you guys, once you make a decision for Christ and you are His, and you really make the decision that you're going to live for the Lord, He is going to be your Lord Savior, death has lost its sting. Death will lose its sting because I tell you what, guys, my eternal life started when I gave my life to the Lord back in 1992. And I don't care if death comes to me at this moment. Because I know what's going to happen. I know my soul's going to be with the Lord. And I know that when the trump is sounded, that my body's going to be resurrected with my soul. And I'm going to be with the Lord forever. That this stinking old body, they can have it. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 16, it says, For the Lord himself should descend from heaven with a shout. That shout is an expectation, and it's, it's a means of a cry of excitement. There's an excitement that's crying out from heaven, the Lord is coming, and the Lord is now come, and he's coming to take his bride home. There's an excitement with the shout. It was primarily used for those that were mariners to help and encourage one another when they were on the sea and they were rowing a boat. But the shout was an announcement. Christ has come for his church. And then the Bible says, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. Now the trumpet of God is interesting because I really like what it says about this. It says that it was a signaling device in battle or hunting. And you also use this trumpet, if you remember the old movies, the trumpet sounded and then the king entered in. The trumpet sounded and then the, the entourage came in and then the king. It was an announcement that the king was coming. And so the trumpet is going to sound that the king is coming. The king is coming. It's going to be an encouragement for the believers that everything that the Bible has written about the rapture and about being with Christ is now coming to fulfillment. And we are going to be with the Lord forever. And this whole earth and all of, all of it that it has, all of the decaying, all of the murders, all the sin, all of the lust and all the perversion of this world is going to be behind us. And forever we are going to live for the Lord. And there's going to be this grand trumpet sound. Now people will argue with you for, forever. I don't know the answer to this, but it's a common question. Will the whole world, even the unsaved, hear the trumpet sound? Or will it just be those that know Jesus Christ? I, this, is, this is just me. I, I, this is just Mike Herbert. And so take it for what that's worth. But I believe the whole world is going to hear this trumpet sound. And I believe the whole world is going to be hearing this trumpet sound because the whole world is going to know that the word of God was true. That if you took the word of God and you believed it, it would have came true. If you would have believed on Christ and you would have known what this trumpet sound would have been. I believe it's going to be a witness to the unsaved world that if they would have came to Christ, if they would have just bowed a knee, if they would have given up on their pride, they would have given up on their stubbornness, they would have given up on their unbelief, they would be with Jesus in the clouds, be with us forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It says this, that we will all be changed. We will all be changed. That word changed means in a flesh. It's a Greek word that used, means a Thomas, from which we get our word Adam. The rapture will take place in the smallest division of time, one Adam of time. In the flesh, every living follower of Christ will be gone. I got that from a commentary from Matthew Henry, I believe. Where it's going to be gone. But it's going to be a wondrous time. 
when Jesus comes to meet us in the clouds. When he comes to meet us in the clouds, he'll meet us halfway. And those that are dead, that know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, those that are sold out for Christ and died, will be resurrected first to be able to see him, just like we read about in the chapter in the book of Matthew, when Jesus had died on the cross. And the Bible says, then those who are alive, those who are believers in Christ that are alive, they're going to be able to meet up with them that were dead. And the Apostle Paul promises us that we will be given a new body, one that will be able to spend eternity with the Lord, one that will be perfect, one that will pull out immortality, and one that will be able to even stand in the very presence of God. Because the bodies that you and I have now that are, that are mortal cannot stand in the presence of God. It's too much. We would, we would die instantly. We're not able to do that. But when we see Christ, when he comes for his bride, the church, then we will put on immortality. In a beautiful new body, in a beautiful new white gown, to be able to spend eternity with him, but the marriage supper of the Lamb for us. A big banquet, a big feast like you've never known before, guys. In an atmosphere that I can't even imagine what it's like. And be able to provide you adjectives and all sorts of verbs and nouns that will describe it. I can't do it. Because the Apostle Paul was taken up in the, th taken up in the third heaven. He says, I can't even tell you. I can't even put in the words. John the Apostle was taken up in the clouds and he was showing the revelation of God in the book of Revelation and he's scratching his head as the Holy Spirit is inspiring him to write and he says, you know, I can't get most of this. I can't figure out this, this language. The things that I'm seeing are too splendid. They're too wonderful. They're too awesome for me to even put it on a piece of paper and the closest I could get is what I'm giving you right now in the book of Revelation. But I'm promising to you this that it is going to be totally awesome beyond our wildest dreams. And Brother Tony, 57 million babies will be with us. Amen. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Where is it? I'm dead to self, I'm alive with Christ. I am not my own, I've been bought with a price. You could do what you want to this body, I don't care. Because I am a child of the King, I'm an heir to the very kingdom of God. This is not where I am staying, this is not where I'm going to reside. The Lord is going to take me home and forever I will be able to praise Him, worship Him, cast my crown before him for everything he's done in my life and live for him all the days of my life. But that also tells me this, that there's a hell for people and a place for people who never make the decision to follow him. People that are still walking the face of this earth who have all the information of the gospel up here but they won't allow it to go 14 inches down here where it needs to. And if you think about your own death, you think about how long you've got to live. And you start having this fear come upon you that I don't know where I'm going to spend eternity. You have a fear that comes upon you because death has not been settled in your heart. And if death has not been settled in your heart, it is because you haven't been made right with Christ. But I got good news for you today. Today can be the day of that salvation. Today can be the day that you decide that you're going to turn and no longer face that hell, but face that raptured church and go up with Christ in the rapture. Amen? Amen. That could be you. That could be you. And you know what I like? I like this. So catch this. God is not 
a respecter of persons. He don't care if you got no money, if you got all the money. You know, I deal with death all week long in my job. I deal with death all week long. I, I see people that are young that pass. People that are babies that pass. And terrible things happen in car wrecks and shootings and all this other stuff. And, you know, I deal with it all the time. It's like, Lord, it just seems like the obituary column is getting younger and younger. But I just know this, that God has come here today to be able to give you the ability to know him as Lord and Savior. So that you can walk out of these doors, guys. You can go up to the child line and grab your food. And you could shout and say, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? You could shout that out. You can shout that out. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Why do we have the rapture? Because of Christ. How is it that we are able to change from mortal into more immortality? It is because of Christ. How is it that we are able to get our sin debt forgiven? It is because of Christ. It is because of what he has done on the cross for you and I that we can lay hold of. I have no self-righteousness. I have no way to stand before a holy, mighty God and plead my cause and say, you know what, you ought to let me in here because I preach at the Milwaukee Rescue Mission on Saturdays. You know what God's going to say? Big deal. The only thing he's concerned about is, do I have the blood of Christ on me? Do I have his cleansing? Is my debt forgiven? My sin has been forgiven. My sins have been cast as far as east as west, never to return no more. And it's not because of what I did. It's because of what Jesus did on the cross. Amen? Amen. It's what he did. I'm just a recipient. I'm just picking up the free gift of salvation. That's all I'm doing. I'm just receiving something. The greatest thing you could ever receive in your life is not going to be an Escalade. It ain't going to be a Range Rover. It ain't going to be some of the million dollar mansions that some of them people got that are celebrities. The greatest gift you could ever have in your whole entire life is to know that you're saved, you know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, that death has lost its sting on you, the grave has lost its victory on you, and you're going to spend eternity with Jesus Christ forever. And he offers that to you today. No charge to you, but it costs Jesus everything. It really comes down to this, the rapture of the church can happen at any moment. And I, I tell you guys this all the time. We, we sing that song, Shall We Gather at the River 559? It's my, it's my prayer. It's my goal. I, I want to I wanna go up in that rapture. I'm hoping he comes back today in some ways, and in some ways I don't because I got a lot of people that need to get saved yet that haven't made that decision. But when I do, if, if, I, if I'm gone, and, and, or if I'm alive, either way, I, it don't matter to me. But I want all of you to be there with me. I want all of you to ride up with us. With Brother Tony, Brother Daniel, with Brother Seth, with the other, Brother Carl, Brother Bruce. I want all of you guys to ride up with us. I don't want none of you left behind, so to speak. I don't want none of you to say, you know what, I feel bad that I didn't take that offer. Because I believe with all my heart, you're going to hear the trumpet sound. You're going to hear the shout from heaven. And the shout from heaven is going to be that encouragement, come on church, let's go! And when that shout comes, then we'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye, which we kind of determined right now is kind of like one one thousandth of a second. I want every single one of you 
to be there with us. Amen. Amen. So let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you. Thank you for this time. We ask you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you know those here in this setting right now, they've never made a decision for Christ. They've never known you as Lord and Savior. And today they heard the gospel. They heard your good news. And they want to raise a hand and they want to say, Pastor Mike, today I want to know Jesus. Amen. I see your hand. Today, I want to know Jesus. Anybody else would raise a hand and say, Today, I want to know Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to know Jesus. I want to ride up with you in that rapture. I want to be there with you. Hallelujah. I want to ride up there with you. Let me pray for you. There's a simple prayer. If you repeat it after me, and you mean it from the depth of your heart, the Bible says you change. I mean, how much more simpler can you get than that? Heavenly Father, Knowing that I'm a sinner and that you died for sinners. Lord, I repent for living my life my way. And today, I heard the gospel. I receive you into my heart as my Lord and as my Savior. Cast my sins as far as east as west, never to return no more. Holy Spirit, come to live within me and change me into the man of God you've called me to be. All of heaven rejoices over the saving of one soul, let alone six or seven today, guys. It is the will of the Father that none would perish, but all would come to eternal life.